Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com and this is the video tutorial for Fibonacci retracement levels. A very popular technical indicator, uh, one of my favorites for looking for support and resistance areas. So the Fibonacci background, as always when I go over these videos. Now Fibs are calculated using special ratios that occur naturally in nature to help predict points of support and resistance, or at least that's where the background of the Fibonacci sequence come from, comes from. So the sequence occurs by adding the two, by adding the previous two numbers and then going sequentially in line. So if you take the numbers one and one, that's two, two and three is five, three and five is eight, eight and 13 is 21, et cetera, et cetera. So the main ratio that is used is 0.618. Now this is found by dividing the one Fibonacci number into the next in a sequence. So 58 divided by 59 equals 0.618. Okay, that's the background on the Fib level. So everyone wants to know where they come from, so there's a quick and dirty example. Now Fibonacci retracements are the most heavily used Fibonacci tool. Now in theory, prices should retrace the initial, di or the initial difference low to high or high to low by ratio of the Fibonacci sequence. Now the main sequence levels or the main points of retracement are generally going to be the 23.6, 32.8, 50%, 61.8 which is the main Fibonacci sequence or the 76.4 retracement. So what that's basically saying is that if a stock is moving and it makes a low to a high, call that point A, it's going to retrace that move by about 32% or 50% or 61.8. Those are going to be the major areas of support resistance going forward, those major support levels. And we'll get into a, a live example here in a couple seconds. But that's the, the whole idea. Now, you can also flip it around. So as a stock is declining, it should rally about to the 38% level or 50% or 61.8. Now, generally speaking, the 50% level is going to be the most are the strongest level, both acting as support and resistance. Stocks tend to rally and retrace half of the movement or sell off half of the movement before continuing up higher. That's just a general, uh, I guess, principle, and it, it's worked pretty well for me as well. Now, actually, like I said, the 50 is really does not have anything to do with the 50 or with Fibonacci's, but traders use this level with a tendency of stocks to reverse after retracing. So each level that is violated, then the stock will move to the next. So if the stock violates the 38.2, the next area of support is going to be the 50% level. If it violates that level, then it's going to go down even further and hit the 61.8. Okay, so does that make sense? So let's actually get into a live example here on my Thinkorswim platform. So this is a stock of Home Depot, and I'm just going to zoom in on a portion of it from 2009 to 2010. But all I basically did, and I'll just use my awesome highlighter, is I took the Fibonacci's and I drew them from the major low up to the major high of the time. So we're just going to assume that we were trading at this time. So what we're looking at, and here's the dotted line, you can see it as I draw the red, but there's the line of the retracement. So you're going to draw it from the major low to the major high. Now what we're looking for is we're looking for the stock to act as support near these major Fibonacci lines. And you can see that I have them here on my chart in blue. And I'll go over them more in detail as we zoom in. But we want the stock to act as support at those levels going forward after we draw the high. So this is really the, the point at which we want to draw a line down the middle of the page and say, okay, everything after this, this is where we're looking for support and resistance. These levels here really don't matter at this point. Okay, so let's zoom in here and just take a look at it a little bit more in depth. Now you can see that as Home Depot started to rally back in 2008, I'm sorry, 2009, 2010, it made this peak up here around 36. Now after we drew the peak and hit that top mark, and again, here's the bottom mark on the left, Notice how the stock actually did act as support at these major Fibonacci levels, right? And this again was drawn before the stock actually made the retracement lower. So the stock fell and bounced slightly off of these levels. Once it violated this level, you can see it ran down to the next major level. Now this level here in the darker blue, this is the 50% retracement level. But notice how even the stock Home Depot acted as resistance between these Fibonacci levels going forward. So Again, you can see that, and I zoom in here just a little bit more, you can see that as the stock fell, it hit this retracement level, which is the 23.6. 
Then it fell and broke straight through the 38.2 and landed right at the 50% retracement level. Notice that right under my cursor, you can see that it says Fibonacci retracements, retracement level 50%. And it acted as support and resistance bouncing back and forth between this level. Now, once it actually broke out, notice that it actually came right back up to this 23 level and it again acted as resistance. So what's really great about Fibonacci's is that they give you a quick frame of reference on where the market might be heading and where the major support and resistance levels might be. Again, I say might be because you have to use them in conjunction with other things. Now, the major difference that I see when drawing my Fibonacci's versus other people is you can see that I've drawn this particular one over the course of a year and a half. Now, what some people try to do, and let me just delete this real quick, some people try to draw these Fibonacci levels very, very tight. You can see they draw them this tight. Now again, I'm not a fan of drawing Fibonacci's unless they're at least six or seven months long. So from top to bottom, six or seven months. But some people like to draw them from intermediate tops to intermediate lows. You just have to understand that this is only going to work on that type of a time frame. It's not going to work once we start zooming out. It's not going to work on these major, major time frames. So that's the only thing I would add about the Fibonacci's. You want to draw them from the major, major lows to the major, major highs. Again, as we start to rally here in Home Depot right now, I'll just draw this, and this is as of the time of this video, obviously. So you can see I'll draw it from the major high or major low here to the major high. Now we have all of these levels that we can look for if Home Depot starts to fall. We can look for support and resistance at all of these major Fibonacci levels. So as always, I hope you guys enjoy this video and thanks for watching. Take a second to share this video right below here with any of your friends, family, or colleagues on your favorite social network.